I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is Psych Hacks, Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is women's greatest enemy. And I'm talking about women's greatest enemy in the context of the sexual marketplace. What is the one thing that most prevents women from getting the relationships they want with the men they want to have them with? It's very simple, ladies. In a word, women's greatest enemy is pride. Your greatest enemy is Pride. Everything you want with respect to men is on the other side of that pride. I alluded to this fact in my series, How to Get Any Man You Want. Let me tell you, ladies, pride is very cold company. It will not keep you warm at night. And in today's episode, I'm going to be discussing three of the main ways your pride is keeping you single. First and foremost, your pride tells you that you are the prize, and you are not, at least not after you turn 30. At 30, the average man's sexual marketplace value exceeds the average woman's sexual marketplace value for the very first time, and that gap only increases as time goes on. Believing that you are the prize intrinsically, and not just the prize relatively and temporarily, is pride. It's this pride that motivates you to squander your most fertile and attractive years, the years in which you would most be able to secure a committed relationship with a high-value man on either having fun or prioritizing your career. You've conflated the privileged moment you pass through with your inherent self-worth. And this is why you think that there's no hurry. Once the prize, always the prize. This sense of pride also stops you from initiating. Like, why would I do that? I shouldn't have to make anything happen for myself. That's the man's job. And anyway, it will happen when it happens. I have plenty of time. Okay, just go back in time like 60 years. Men didn't pursue women. It was women who pursued men. It was women who dragged men, sometimes kicking and screaming, to the altar. And they did this because they are the ones on a tighter timeline. For better or worse, women don't have the same luxury of waiting around as men do. Back then, everyone understood that if a woman wanted a relationship, she had to get out there and make it happen. And this sense of urgency has been disrupted by the twin beliefs, I'm the prize and I have plenty of time, generated by pride. The fact of the matter is that it has never been easier in the history of the world for women to get access to the men they want to have relationships with. With social media, you can find the hottest, richest, most eligible bachelors anywhere in the world and slide right into their DMs. And if your pics are good enough, you actually might get a response. That won't be enough to seal the deal, but you can at least get your foot in the door. What you do with that opportunity is up to you. And yet, even with this unprecedented access to high-value men, which allows you to safely and freely and instantly connect with almost anyone on this planet, you still don't initiate. And this makes it very difficult to sympathize with women who are single and don't want to be. Like, get off your ass and do something about it. If you're unemployed and don't want to be, make it your job to get a job. And if you're single and don't want to be, make it your job to get a relationship. Expecting that the relationship that you want is just going to fall into your lap is as arrogant as expecting that your dream job is somehow just going to materialize into your life. Okay? All right. The second way that pride is obstructing your success is that it's causing you to disparage male sexuality. A lot of Western women even seem to find male sexual interest insulting. Like men should be appreciating the beauty of your mind and the depths of your soul rather than your physical appearance. You think that our attraction has little to do with you, like the person inside your body, and that in any case, if we just want sex, we'd just be better off hiring a prostitute. The attitude is basically that sex and physical attraction are beneath you, which is a form of pride. Now, before I go any further, if you're liking what you're hearing, please consider sending this episode to someone who might benefit from its message because it's word of mouth referrals like this that really help to make the channel grow. And if you like what you're hearing, you can also 
hit the thanks button and tip me in proportion to the value you feel you've received from this episode. I don't do corporate sponsorships or product placements, so I rely on your support to make all this happen. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, this might hurt some feelings, but ladies, you have to understand that if men did not experience sexual attraction to you, the vast majority of them would have nothing to do with you. Like nothing. This is because men can generally get all their other needs met more cheaply, more easily, and more enjoyably with other men. Like, I would rather talk about quantum mechanics and Shakespearean literature with other men. I'd rather problem solve with and confide in other men. I'd rather hang out with and have fun with other men. Like, do you see? Without my sexual attraction, which as a heterosexual man is primed for feminine traits more generally, I might only rarely have dealings with women in the normal course of events. And this is really how humans have organically organized themselves across culture and throughout history. Men generally spend their time with other men. Women generally spend their time with other women. And there's some social commingling at the end of the day. So rather than see male sexual interest through the lens of your pride as something beneath you, ladies, you can see it as an opportunity to gain access to a particular man who may not yet have another reason for dealing with you. I get that you want to be seen for who you are deep down inside, but spoiler alert, we can't fucking see who you are deep down inside. What we see is your body. And if we didn't see that, we probably wouldn't be making the effort to see anything else. What's more, we can hear what comes out of your mouth. Now, I can appreciate that unwanted sexual interest is awkward and uncomfortable. I get that. However, if the first thing that comes out of your mouth in response to my attraction is criticism, judgment, and shame, I don't think I really want to know who you are deep down inside. What's just on the inside is distasteful enough. And the third thing that gets in women's way in the sense of their pride is their contempt for anything related to domesticity. Cooking, cleaning, childcare. Just hire a maid. Just hire a nanny. You think that this is low-value, degrading work. Work that, in any case, would prevent you from fulfilling what is apparently your true calling in life, being an employee. The same women who insist that they could never, ever be obedient to a man spend the majority of their lives being obedient to their often male employers. They trade a family for a paycheck. This is the pride that cuts off the nose to spite the face. Ladies, you need to closely examine what is actually so distasteful to you about domestic activities. I recently watched a podcast episode in which an attractive young woman was asked whether she would ever do her man's laundry. And she like literally shuddered with revulsion. It was like the question triggered some repressed trauma and this woman was transported back to the handmaid's tale where a simple act of service was the gateway to patriarchal oppression. It's not. It's laundry, which thanks to modern technology is literally the easiest of all the household chores to complete. You're not down at the riverbank with a washboard scrubbing out the stains with a lie you rendered yourself from pig fat. You're moving the clothes from the hamper to the washer and pushing a button. Laundry is not your enemy. It's your idea of laundry that is. And this goes for most of the other domestic activities. As I mentioned in the first episode of this series, the key to getting the relationship you want with the man you want to have it with is to be useful. And in order to be useful, you have to allow yourself to be used. Your pride will rankle at that, but that's a fact. The good news is that as long as you exercise good discernment, you will be rewarded for being used. It's just like a job. Because you allow other people to use your time and skills and expertise, you are compensated with money. If you didn't allow people to use you, you don't get paid, right? The same is true for relationships. If you want a high-value relationship, you must allow yourselves to be used and to be used in the way that those who are paying, i.e. the men you want to have a relationship with, want to use you. And keep in mind that if something's not useful, 
It's decoration. So ladies, if you don't want to be useful, then you damn well better be decorative. And the fact of the matter is that most of you are not attractive enough to be decorative and that you might not like it even if you were. Why? Because what do decorations do? Nothing. They sit nice and quiet up on a shelf where they belong, attesting to the reflected status of the man who bought them. So if you want a relationship with a man who isn't, that isn't primarily decorative, then you have to allow yourselves to be used by him. If not, then you are useless and the world will pass you by. The things that make a man's life easier and better are not beneath you. They are your ticket in. So those are the three ways that pride is standing in your way, ladies. Resolve these issues and you too can have the relationships that you want with the men you want to have them with. What do you think? Does this fit with your own experience? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've gotten this far, you might as well like this episode and subscribe to this channel. You may also consider becoming a channel member with perks like the priority review of comments or booking a paid consultation. As always, thank you for listening.